N1BUG 10 GHz Beacon Project Update, April 2024, take 397. <laughs> no, just kidding. I don't think we're up to quite that many takes yet, but suffice to say I've had a few challenges trying to get this video together. Uh, I have a new camera that I'm using to, uh, to film this, and let's just say uh, I've had some challenges getting settings and stuff straightened out. So I have done all this a few times only to run into problems in post-editing and putting a video together for YouTube. Okay, so anyway, seriously, um, I wanted to give an update on the uh, 10 gig beacon. It's been a long time since the uh, last video, which was uh, kind of related to this on making pipe cap filters. I haven't really had any uh, money for projects for a while, so uh, there's been no funding to, to buy anything to really progress this along a lot. And I've been busy with some other things in life, but mostly very positive stuff, but just uh, a lot of other things going on. Um, so I'm finally getting back to the beacon, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on uh, where the beacon stands, because I haven't really done that after the last uh, round of work and uh, what the next steps are, and uh, let you listen to the beacon a little bit on uh, the local receivers over in the shack uh, next door, and talk a little bit about some of the difficulties or challenges involved with monitoring a local microwave signal at uh, very close range. So the uh, beacon is sitting over here on the bench uh, beside me, and we'll go and take a closer look at that first. I'll talk about what it is before we go over in the shack and uh, Try listening to it. Okay, so here's the uh, the beacon in its current implementation. It's mounted on a uh, aluminum panel, which will drop into a uh, a large box for mounting uh, the whole thing up on a tower eventually. So let's talk about each of these stages. Up here we have the uh, Arduino beacon keyer that generates the Morse code messages. These unused cable glands are for wires to feed in from temperature sensors. I'm interested in having the internal and external temperature at the beacon uh, be part of the uh, Morse code message, uh, so I need temperature sensors for that, which uh, I haven't gotten to uh, adding yet. So that generates the Morse code message. Down here is the uh, DigiLO. Um, signal source which generates a signal at 1152 megahertz. Currently it's locked uh, to 10 megahertz coming in here for my Trimble Thunderbolt GPSDO. Uh, as mentioned in a, a previous video I might do a little trick and use a uh, use a programmable GPSDO, a Leo Bodner unit that can generate a signal 299 hertz higher than 10 megahertz as the final uh, reference is to uh, get a cleaner signal up in the um, the area of the 10 gig band where I want it. I discussed that in an earlier video so I won't go into it in uh, great length here. Right now it's a 10 megahertz reference and the uh, DigiLO is set up for the cleanest signal which means it's set to generate exactly 1152.000 megahertz which after going through the multipliers comes out at 10,368.000 10, megahertz, which is not quite where I want it. Close, but about 300 kilohertz away from where I want it, three to 400 kilohertz. So, so over here we have the uh, multiplier stages, the W1GHZ uh, personal beacon board. Um, there's five stages in here. There's a uh, tripler to 3456, an amplifier to boost that up, a tripler to 10 gig, two more amplifier stages to uh, boost the level up again. Uh, so the first three stages here uh, operate uh, all that run all the time on uh, 8 volts. The last two stages of amplifier amplification one also 8 volts, but they are keyed on and off. They're the stages controlled by the uh, beacon keyer to generate the uh, Morse code. So, uh, because it's very clicky, a lot of key clicks, uh, keying them on and off very, very hard like that, I will be adding uh, a series resistor shunt capacitor RC uh, circuit for uh, shaping of the keying. The resistor is already in down here and the capacitor will be added. So there's two voltage regulators here is what I'm getting to. Uh, one of these is 8 volts that runs the uh, first three stages in here. The other is 10 volts. So that after going through the additional resistor, you get some voltage drop there. Uh, there's 8 volts left to go to the uh, stages. 
So that's uh, all uh, in there. Uh, now I need to get the signal down to the appropriate level to drive the little amplifier I have down here. So this is just an attenuator. I think it's, uh, I don't know, 12 or 14 dB or something, whatever it is. And then we go through a filter to clean up any residual uh, 3456 or second harmonics, you know, at 20 gigs or whatever there might be uh, coming out of this multiplier uh, unit. It's filtered somewhat by these two uh, pipe cap filters in here, but I wanted to filter it more before going into the amplifier. So this amplifier takes about minus 7 or minus 8 dBm input, puts out about uh, 24 to 25 dBm on the voltage I'm running it on, about theoretically about 24 dBm or 250 milliwatts, which is the current power level of the beacon. Uh, I do want to up that more. I have this one potential amplifier here, which is an old uh, two watt amplifier. I don't know how well this will hold up in beacon service, and I don't know if it's producing the full two watts. Uh, so I'm kind of looking for a better amplifier to get. I'd like to get up around five watts, ideally, but I, uh, I don't know if I can get and afford an amplifier for that. So this is not really part of the beacon. This is a 30 dB attenuator to knock the uh, signal down to a safe level for the HP 432A power meter, which can handle a maximum of plus 10, D, plus 10 dBm or 10 milliwatts. It can't handle the whole uh, power coming out of the little amplifier there. So um, one thing I did run into here that I'll mention is that the level of 10 gig uh, RF coming out of the multiplier board is highly dependent on the length of this cable connecting the digi at 1152 megahertz into this multiplier board. That probably suggests an impedance mismatch issue there uh, looking into that uh, multiplier. I don't know if I'm going to fool with this a lot or try and leave it the way it is. What I did here is I just used a, whatever cable uh, is very convenient lengthwise to connect these up. And that meant that I have about 3 or 4 dB less power output here and 10 gigs from the multiplier than I can get with a, with a cable that's specially selected to give optimum uh, results. But since I'm attenuating it down a lot here anyway to get down to the level of the driver, as long as this holds up over time and I don't see too much fluctuation in power levels, uh, you know, resulting to, uh, you know, from this problem or thermal changes or whatever, I'll probably just go ahead and leave it alone. Um, and, you know, probably uh, because a tripler is a very non-linear stage and you're, it's basically a very overdriven amplifier that's very rich in third harmonic uh, on the output, uh, it may be that, you know, a 1 or 2 dB change in level because of this cable might result in a, in a much higher level, maybe the 4 or 5 dB I'm seeing uh, uh, out of the tripler, and, you know, that just carries on down the line, so, you know, being low. So I don't know how much of an issue it is. I'm just going to leave it alone for now and uh, see how it goes. So um, that's uh, the beacon as it stands right now. And I'll just go ahead and flip the power on, and you can see it come to life, and we'll take a look at the uh, power output over here uh, on the meter. Now oh, there it is powered up and you can see the LED flashing there on the keyer as it generates the Morse code message. And we see the um, power meter going up and down in sync with the Morse code and there'll be a 10 second steady key down carrier here coming up where we can get a steady look at this. There we go right there. So it's reading minus one on the meter and I've got this set for, so full scale on the meter is uh, minus 5 dBm, so minus 5 and then 1 dB below that is minus 6 dBm. But remember, we're attenuating by 30 dB, so minus 6 dBm plus the 30 dB that we're losing in the attenuator is plus 24 dBm out of the amplifier, which would be 250 milliwatts. Now, how accurately I can measure or estimate power at 10 gig is highly debatable. I think it's within a couple dB of that, and but I probably wouldn't have much confidence that it's, uh, you know, that it's right on the money. So, so there's that. And uh, here in a moment, we'll go over in the shack and uh, listen to this on a couple of receivers over there, and talk about some of the issues involved in uh, doing that, and listen to the uh, key clicks that I want to tame on this. But uh, in order to cut down on some of the radiation coming out of the uh, the RF stages, I'm just going to put covers uh, on here, excuse me, while I uh, go and reach for them. Just set one on there, and uh, maybe one on here too, just to cut down on some of the uh, radiation out of there. 
The issue is that, uh, you know, the desired signal coming out, which is keyed on and off, is 30 dB of it is lost here in this attenuator, and then there's a piece of coax, which probably, hopefully, doesn't radiate too much, and the rest of it just goes into a power sensor here, which is basically a dummy load. So there's no antenna, nothing really radiating that. So the total radiated power after the uh, keying and, and amplification and all that is, is very low. You know, it's in the microwatt range, probably, a few microwatts, and... And so um, the few microwatts of radiation that comes out of the uh, of here just by leakage can also be heard on the receiver uh, next door as well. So hence I set the covers on here just to uh, cut that down a little and you'll still be able to hear it. Before I get to work on the key clicks, I'll have to come up with a better arrangement. I've got this little um, antenna over here, or really a, uh, a dish feed, a uh, feed horn that I'll be using to, uh, you know, to radiate signal and I'll try and try and come up with getting the uh, receiving antenna over there further away so that you don't hear that that radiation that kind of fills in the gaps uh, between the uh, Morse code elements. You only hear the final keyed signal coming out of this. Anyway, we'll go over in the shack and uh, and listen to this and uh, talk a little bit more about it. So here we are over in the ham shack and we're watching the uh, beacon signal on the SDR. This is coming from the dish uh, up on top of my tower on the dish that I previously talked about, 76 centimeter diff dish with a uh, satellite TV LNB uh, receiving the 10 gig signal down converting to 618 megahertz and uh, monitored on the SDR. So let me turn up the volume so you hopefully can hear the signal here. I hope the uh, microphone is picking that up. So this signal is actually fairly weak. For a couple of reasons, uh, you know, the beacon, as I've just discussed over uh, over at the workbench, is not put not radiating much power because it's basically into uh, you know a dummy load, and the dish is some 400 feet away from it or so, and and up 100 feet on a tower, and I can't aim the dish down at an angle toward the house. It's aimed at the horizon, so this is not really in the uh, the uh, main lobe of the uh, dish either. So it's uh, quite weak there. And you also can hear probably on that signal some wavering and fluttering and changes in signal strength. See how watery and wavery it sounds. Uh, and that's probably due to trees moving around out there in the breeze and causing a lot of signal scattering and uh, rapid fading effects. So we can also listen to this on a conventional receiver, which is uh, running on the uh, 10 gig transverter with a little uh, antenna right here, a little uh, sort of a, uh, a dipole uh, thing that I built. But this is only, you know, one room away, uh, 10 or 12 feet away from the beacon, so it's picking up a lot of the direct radiation from those uh, unkeyed stages, like I mentioned before. So unfortunately, because of that, um, you can hear the uh, signal in between the Morse code elements when you shouldn't be. And, uh, you know, I'll have to, uh, have to put the beacon into an antenna and relocate this transverter and antenna further away just so you're hearing the real output of the beacon by itself and not some of that low-level leakage uh, from the stages before the keyed stages that you're hearing here now. But uh, in any case... You can kind of tell even on frequency that the keying sounds very hard and clicky. And if you tune off, so you can still see on the S meter and hear the uh, key clicks. Right now you don't because it's sending a steady carrier, so there's no key clicks right now. When it goes back to sending again, you'll hear them come up.
Okay, there we are. See, there's the key clicks. You see them moving the yes meter, and you can hear them clicking away. Now, it's very, very hard keying. And uh, I'm quite confident that, uh, you know, when this is a really strong signal, even if you're listening to it from some, uh, some distance away and it's uh, really, really strong, that you're going to hear those, you know, 10 or 20 or 100 kilohertz maybe up and down the band. So... So that, that is the next thing I want to work on, is taming those key clicks, and I'll do another video about that when I've uh, gotten into it. And let you know uh, whether I've had success with that or not. And do some, you know, before and after uh, key click uh, modification uh, tests. So that's the current state of the, uh, of the uh, beacon. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for a further update, hopefully coming out within... Uh, Within a week or two, I hope. I need to find some time. It is a busy time of year with spring yard work and all that, but I need to find some time to work on this and to hopefully get another video, video done for everyone soon.